Wednesday, Steve here, Woodworking, master, <laughs> Woodworking Masterclass. I just had a brilliant idea and I thought I would stream it. So there's no guarantee it's going to work. I've just got to finish fracture burning this little bit here. And then, what? I, this is Woodworking Masterclass, by the way. I don't know if I got that out before. Um, and the other day I did a stream. Um, blah, 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 looking for my phone. I did a stream... And I repaired a, a Jarrah harp that had a broken uh, neck and pillar joint, which was something I thought, oh, that could happen, and it did happen. I'm pressing the wrong buttons here. Uh, and it did leave quite a, um, an obvious scar where the glue joint went. It's fine. It's going to play fine. It's strong. Those of you that can remember um, or watched it, I actually got a bit of 10 mil carbon rod, 3.8 carbon rod, and put it down between the, jo uh, the joint. So there's no way in the world it's got any flex in it anymore. But because it did have a bit of bend in the neck when I did the repair, when I've straightened it out and it's on straight, there's a, you can see a visible crack. Now, I could have repaired that with... Um, let me see if I can get the chat up. I could have repaired that with putty or shellac, or wax, but it still would have been noticeable. So what I came up with, I thought was a fairly novel idea. Uh, as I said, I've got to do this, and I'm working on about three or four things at the moment, which is all good. The um, steaming box that I'm making so I can do more extreme steam bending is, is coming along quite well. I've uh, got the kettle behind me and I just had that running to see if it would actually do what it's meant to do. And it does, so I'm happy with that. And then I thought, oh, we can fix this harp up. Well, no guarantees, but I'm, I'm going to give it a shot. I think, I think it should be okay. I, do, I just don't know how it's going to go. But we'll give it a go. Who have we got? G'day, Jared. G'day, Vince. Dennis, g'day from West Virginia. Well... From Brisbane, Australia, Dennis, welcome to the workshop. Good to have you on board. If anyone's new and you'd like to hit the subscribe button, I would appreciate that. And you get notifications when I'm on because at the moment I'm not doing set times. It's um, just sort of whatever happens or what I'm doing. And, and this one I was just um and an R and I've just uh, turned the pins for the Irish harp. Uh, the 10th century Irish harp I'm making and I've just finished turning 29 of those and I've got to make some horseshoes and then I came down here and looked at that situation with the broken harp I thought oh I wonder if that'll work so I'll show you what we'll do but you just have to bear with me while I burn this because this is just the end oh, of another harp it's an adjustable stand that allows the player to get out of here I'm trying to get this foot control over here. excuse me oh there we go Got cords and all sorts of rubbish under there um yeah allows them to adjust it well the height whilst they're playing and seeing it's called the black lightning harp i thought I might as well put some black lightning in there. So we'll put that one there, that one there, that one there, and that one there, and that one there, and we'll do that. Okay. So we won't be too long doing this. And then I can show you the other bit. Don't like that. Whoops. There we go. Nope, she's too dry. You've got to get the right moisture content or you just don't get the patterns you're looking for. I, as I said the other day, I sort of fell in love with this process and then I didn't and now I'm sort of 
back into it. And I think it looks pretty awesome. G'day, Ernest from Texas. And the same g'day from Brisbane, Australia to you. It's really weird when you're doing this on cylindrical objects. This does nothing except for aesthetic purposes. Just gives it a different sort of look. I've nearly finished it. There you go, I think. quicker than my fingers in. Don't like that look. And one more bit here. There you go, that'll do. Okay, finish with that. That goes on the other bit. There you go. So it's a, a complete set, if you like. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. I'm not sure if I changed camera. Okay, that bit's out of the way. Let's move on to the idea that I've had. And if it's successful, I'll actually pull it apart and edit it as a, a standalone vehicle, a vehicle, video. I'm just turning these on to record so we can record it. Oh, how is everyone? Just popped in to say, I've... Uh, well, thanks for coming in, Andy, because it wouldn't have been a stream without you, my friend. I hope you have a good sleep. Catch up with us later on. Uh, oh, dear. What have we got? I've got, I got a question. Why is it you end up with all these spare drills? I, I've gone. My drill sets, and I have numerous um, sets. I've got about three down in this shed, two up in the wood turning shed, another one in the mechanic shed, and no, that's it. And then, then I do have some odd sized drills, but they're all regular sized drills, and I'm not missing any of them out of any sets. So I just don't know where they came from. One of those things. Okay, so here is the culprit. Uh, for those of you that remember, um, this broke because it was starting to bend and with the tension, and I tried to straighten it and it broke. So, what I've got, I've got a dowel going up the inside there. Am I looking at? Yeah, there you go. Let me just change this camera angle here. Oh. I've got a dowel going up the inside, and now I've got a carbon fibre rod going from here down to here. 
so there's no way in the world that's going to bend. And then I had to retrofit these, which are works in progress at the moment, and they actually have carbon rods from here to here. So I could put that in, I'm not going to, but I could put it in the vise and give that a good yank and it won't budge. But this one, where's the screwing driver? We'll just take this out. Whoops. So one of the things I like working with solid timber or at least veneers, um, rather than stains. This has got a bit of epoxy on it where we got overexcited putting the glue on the other day. Now, if that was stain, get a decent screw. If that was stain, I would have a dickens of a time trying to match that. Seeing it's solid timber all the way through, it doesn't matter, all I've got to do is sand it back and then I can spray it and then we're back. I'm just taking this plaque off. This plaque was meant to take a lot of the flex out of the neck because it, when I get it out you'll see it's a fairly hefty piece of brass in there. Where's a brittle? Yeah! Okay, ta. There you go, mail's just arrived. And, oh no, there we go. All right. Here, you can see I've got that's not a too bad a joint. I could possibly clean that up with a plane or a chisel. That, you can see there's a scar. And around this side, you can definitely see there's a break in the timber. That was where it had actually bent. And when I straightened it out, it had that check there or that gap. So it really doesn't affect the harp at all, it will play quite nicely. Oh, I do love that. But it just looks a bit unsightly. And if if I was going to sell this one, which I wouldn't, won't, uh, you know, people looking at it, oh, it's been damaged, which it has been, let's face it. So what I thought was if I take the line of the neck there, and then you can see where that break is. I've got a piece of inlay that will fit. Then I could leave it like that, but I thought, no, I'll take it right back to the string band. I was going to go over the string band, over the back and, and um, down the other side, but no, I think I'll just take it from there up to the string band. And the inlay, I'm going to make, I must have a lot of time on my hand. But I made that years ago. It's, it's literally made up of hundreds, if not thousands, of pieces of veneer. Um, I'll run a plane over it and you can see how intricate it is. There's a block plane. I uh, made it to go around the box that I was making. There, it's Grecian scrolls. And it's just made out of, as I said, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pieces of veneer glued together. Anyway. What I did, I did a big thick bit like that, and I'm going to do here, and then all I have to do is cut a piece on the bandsaw, and then I've got nice thin inlays. There's another one I did here that I put around the chessboard years ago, and I actually, I don't know if I've got the other bit. I actually um, put 
a name, wrote a name in veneers. Now that's a much simpler piece, but I quite like those Grecian urns, uh, Grecian scrolls. Uh, the other thing is this is Jarrah and Chilean myrtle and the harp is Jarrah, so it fits in quite nicely. Uh, G'day Lawrence, how are you mate? Dreadnought, I see you still have all your fingers, you're not working hard enough. I am, I am, it's just, there's that thing that's very low and short on the ground now called common sense. <laughs> oh dear, those spare drill bits are supposed to be for when you, your care factor is very low. Yeah, so I've got some milling to do. I um, these <coughs> bridge pins, not bridge pins, harp tuning pins that I've just made. This square drive at the top, this one's five mil, but I, I'm doing them now at six mil, but it's about half a mil difference. So this section might be five mil, this section is five, uh, 4.7 or 4.5. Couldn't figure what it was. And then I realised because I bought a budget, um, I think it's a, a ER32 collet set for it. I actually got the collet holder yesterday and put a straight edge on it. And one side has got a bit of um, a hump in it. So when I'm machining, uh, one way, if that hump is between my jaw vices, no, not a drama. But once I turn it onto the bottom, that hump then moves the collet up about half a mil. So I'm actually taking half a mil off. So I've got to machine those. And uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't say I was a machinist per se. I, I actually have a qualification of a, <laughs> a machinist, but I haven't used it, so I'm not going to say I'm a machinist, I'm a woodworker, but I will video uh, for those that aren't working with one hundredth of a thousandth of an inch. And rough enough is good enough. Okay, so what I've planned on doing is, what camera are we on? Two, there you go. Um, getting, cutting a slither of this and then rebaiting this and then inlaying that into there and gluing it in. So what I think I'll do first, I'll cut the rebate first and then I can cut this to the thickness of the rebate. It's going to be easier. So the challenge comes of actually cutting the depth and I really I'm not sure what I'm going to do there. <clears throat> I think I'm, oh, I can't really use the router because I've got the brass plate in the way. But what I will do is just score this. And I'm hoping that is in that join, which it is. If I put that in there, and then bring this to there. Should take those bridge pins out. Then. I couldn't be bothered. Um, what I'm doing now, which I'll show you, and those of you watching me for a while know, so that ruler doesn't slip because I've got 240 wet and dry there. If I was trying to do that without that, that ruler would be slipping everywhere, and that line I get 
wood not look as nice. I'm just seeing what size bit I've got in 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 my little router. If I can find my little router. Ooh, here's a chance. Here's a tool you don't see me use very often. Yeah, one of those. A vibrating cutter. Um, let me just see what I've got here. How big is that? No, it's a bit too big. So, might have to get a smaller, smaller bit. Oh! Over to where I keep them right out of bibs and bobs. <whistles> that looks quite nice. So I think we'll use. Oh, what's up? Okay, that can go. Oh, what's that? No, that's too close. I've got, got one that's near the width, but if I deviate slightly, it's going to give me a problem. So I'm not going to do it. Oh. Come on, be nice to me. There we go. I prefer to use a thinner bit and take a couple of passes, but use that size bit and get the ducks and drakes and uh, muff it up. So we might give this a go, just see if we can get a bit of depth on it. So this is, it tickles, it doesn't cut, it's not spinning, it's vibrating. bit of depth to play with. So now, <laughs> I'm not that good, I'll need a carriage. Here we go. Now, how deep I want to go, we'll try that depth. And have a, have a look, see how it goes. A lot of this I think I'm going to have to take out with a chisel, but if I can get some of it out with this, it'll be okay.
going to have to take those bridge pins out. And I, I think, I actually, I did too. I took that spanner up to the other shed. So in this I've got a spanner I can use here. I might have to go to the other, or, hang on, wait a minute. Let me just see. What am I going to do? Take three. Oh dear. This might do. Now, bear with me. I've just got to shoot up the other shed and go and get the spanner. And true to form, I couldn't find it, but I found, hopefully, a set we can use. I just bought a set of these for the workshop, and I, I don't know where it is. Could be still in the car, I don't know. Close enough, that'll do. Here we go. Taking these out. <whistles> Gotta make it heat more of these too. I'm not taking that brass plate out because it would be ruined by the time I take all the little brads out. Okay, I'll give her one more after this one. What have we got? Hello, how are you? And Vince, I see you have the original tool before the patent expire. Yeah, it's, um, is it clean? Fine, I think it is, F-E-I-N-E. -E. Yeah, funny, funny story about that. It was in a metal box and everything. There was a, um, I don't know if it was a deceased estate or garage sale or, or something anyway this guy had and uh where is it yeah fine f-e-i-n um in 
a box, metal box and everything like that. And bearing in mind, retail of that size were nearly $500, $497 or something, I think, before everything went plastic. And uh, I had a look at it and I opened the box. Oh, well, that's nice. And I said to the guy, um, well, that thing there, whatever that is. And he looked and said, oh, I don't know. He said, it's a grinder, he said, but it's hopeless. I've never heard of the brand. I said, oh, well, what would you want? For? He said, oh, 50 bucks. So, yeah, I couldn't get me 50 out quick enough. And it's this type of tool I very seldom use, but sometimes it's the only tool that'll do the job. And there we go. Um, Dreadnought, you're not talking to me. G'day, Trevor! Yeah, hey, <laughs> Lawrence, don't fall out of it, mate. It's over my head too. I am just got a deer. I thought I'd give it a punt. It might work, or we might we might have to have another video how to turn a design opportunity feature into a bigger, better feature. So don't cut myself. Um, I think I'm going to have to go in there, definitely with a chisel. But maybe I might get away with all. I don't know. We'll try a a little. Oh, router play. Go. I'll give this a go. Okay, that's good there. So we'll... Yeah, when these first came out, oh, I was a joke. Who'd be using it? And I tell you what, I use these little tools quite a bit. No, I think I'm going to... Uh, what else have I got? <whistles> boom, ba -dum, boom. Oh, I can get a little way, maybe, with this shoulder plate. That's sharp enough. It's not going to work, is it? I've timed out for 300 seconds. Why was that? It wasn't from this end, Dreadnought. Oh, we'll 
try this. Oh, I didn't think of this. No, this is... I'm going to be... It's going to be a lot easier, I think, with a... with a chisel. If I don't do any... good here, I'm going to go the chisel. No, nah, it's not going to work. All right, let me get a chisel. Here we go. Again, I don't want to use the exact width chisel until I'm pretty confident I'm going in the right direction. Now this is where it gets tricky because I don't really want to scratch the brass but I've got to go up to the brass. There we go. That's looking good. I don't care if it's not the same depth all the way along because what I'm going to do is cut it wider or thicker than I need it so if it's not the same depth it doesn't matter when I plane it to get it flat you're not going to notice it. Okay, now what have I got? I don't have an eighth chisel anymore. Oh, yes, I do. No, nah, it's a rotten one. Um, yep, hang on, I'll get a carving chisel. That's just what we need. A little two carving chisel. In the corner. Here we go. This little fella here, little two mil one. And we'll just go right up to the cheek band. down a, the thickness of that so we can put that in okay now yeah it's not too bad Okay, I'm going to go and cut. Uh, oh, I got some Flash Harry verniers here. So I bought them the other day. Where did I put them? And I, I thought, oh, I'll put them somewhere where I'll remember where they are. And I'll leave there you go. Get, getting a bit sophisticated here, but anyway. Oh, dear. Okay, that's mm. 
That's 1.2 mil there. And it's one mil there. Well, I'm not going to lose any sleep over two mil, I don't think. Uh, just a smidge. Can't help myself. Just want to get that a little bit out in the corner. <laughs> so that should yeah, 1.3. 1.3, 1.3, okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'll go and cut this on the bandsaw and we'll see how we go. Come over to the bandsaw with me. There we go. I haven't got a particularly sharp blade in this at the moment. We'll see how we go. So I'm cutting this at about, oh, maybe two mil. What I don't want is wander. I'll bring that right down. Don't want to rush it. There you go. You don't want to rush it. chuckled to myself just then. You see, this here, what the hell did that happen? That was Bob. I just finished making it and my dog chewed it up. He's, he's a good mutt. Well, he was. Okay. So now, saw side, saw side up. We can put that in there. I'll just clean that off. There's a bit of 100 grit or something. Just going to take all these dags off here. Move that. And I can put that oh, a little bit out, but I, I'm not going to lose much sleep over that, I don't think. We should be okay. All right. So now this portion comes around here. I'm just going to rough that. I'm going to use a knife. You could use a 
pencil. Come here. There we go. All right, and then we'll cut that here as well. I would have liked it a little bit of a tighter fit than that, but it is what it is. a chat before I do that. People are talking to me. <laughs> uh. No, Dreadnought, you did anything wrong. I didn't even know you were on timeout. I saw there was some deleted comments. I thought, what was that all about? I very, very, very seldom, seldom put people on timeout. Uh, in fact, I... I think you could count on one hand the number of times I have, and that's just when they were being downright rude. But no, I didn't put you on time out. I'm just trying to find a sweep that is, that's pretty close. Spot on. Okay. So now, what I will do is that's going that way. That means that one's going that way. Good on you. <laughs> this is a bit of an overkill, but it doesn't matter. It'll do. There we go. So now, should, I hate that word, should. Where are we? Oh dear. Let's go that one. And that should now fit in nicely-ish. It's got a bit of fine to do. A little, 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 little bit. If I had a drum sander in here, I'd do it on that. We'll try this. Too aggressive. That's what I wanted, but I just knocked a big, <laughs> I just knocked a big chunk out. So, that bit we will save for later on and we'll do it again. What I'll do is I'll get this bit done. 
Okay, we'll try that. From memory, when I glued this together too, I think I used hide glue. Gently, gently tap it until you're all the way through. Now, just got a little bit here. You most likely won't be able to see it, but there's just the slightest amount that's got to come off. Gotta hold your tongue in the right way and hold your breath. Just a little bit off the back. There we go. There you go, that's pretty darn good fit there. If I didn't drop it. So what I'm going to do is glue that in, clamp it, and I think I'll cut it about there. nicely in there like that and I'll do the same on the other side but what I'll do first of all is clamp that uh, glue in and clamp it where's my glue oh, if I had um, if I had my glue pot on which I normally do when I come down it's one of the first things I do is turn the glue pot on but this morning I didn't and then a bit on the back As I've said many, many times, make sure you, if you're going to get in the woodwork, have a bucket of water next to your bench. Because it's amazing how often you just need that water and a rag or something. And if you've got it at your bench, you're miles in front. Okay. That's gonna be all right there, I think. I'll just get a slightly longer piece of wood for that.
marvellous. You can't ever find the right size bit you want. Oh, might have some in the scrap bucket over here. That. That'll do. Let me just cut a bit of that. And then I can stop and have a chat. For goodness sake. Any other day, you know, that, that wouldn't slide down. day to day with clams, aren't I? Goes there, it goes. The joys of working by yourself. Here we go. Come up, so I've nearly finished. Just trying to clamp this. Okay. No problemo. There we go. That's got the sucker. Okay, so I'll let that just for a little bit. And then I'll do a bit along the, the front here, and then on the back. And I'd say tomorrow it'll all be dry and then I can plane it off. Let me have a chin wag. Uh, 
In, I'm in the corner again. <laughs> I, I reckon you're doing good at being in the naughty corner, mate. I'd be in the graveyard. <laughs> G'day, Brenda. How are you? Oh, dear. A uh, four-stringer, are you making out of a cigar box or are you just making a, a sound box and then putting the neck on it, Lawrence? I like making those. Hubcap guitars too, they're fun. But you're doing well if you only build them three times. I, I, you could put a knot on front of that or after that. Uh, why did you put me on time out? Did I say something wrong on... In other words... Uh, no, I dread an order. I hope I've already answered that. I didn't put you on time out. I'm sorry. It's just one of those things that happen. I've got no um, protocols in here unless the only thing I can think of, and it wasn't intentional, to fit my phone or something like that, but I don't know. No, it's all good. Uh, <laughs> that's me. I don't like our... Right, are uh, right rude people? <laughs> are you getting political, Lawrence? Oh dear. Yeah, no, you can. Yeah, political correctness doesn't belong in my workshop. I tell you, you get stuff done. That's it. Who's trying to take your stuff? See you, Henry. Steve, the third plane from the left is a five and a quarter. Oh, wait a minute. Let me have a look. Third plane from the left as I'm looking at it. One, two. You're right. Yep, the five and a quarter. So it goes two, three, five and a quarter, five and a half, five, six, seven, eight. And then over there, I've got a ten. Scrub plane, a number four, and a circle. That's it. You got it right. Oh, well, what else can I do? That's what I wanted to do. Um, so what? Actually, I might even continue that tomorrow. I'll just see if I've got anything here. Where's that blink mallet that I dropped? Oh, dear. Carbon chisel. They're genuine old man noises, those. Ah, oh, there he is. Ah, oh, dear. Put that over there. So hopefully that is going to fix an ugly problem. And it's um, going to look all right. There, there you go. Although oh, Lawrence has gone. There's another monumental stuff up. The mine drilled all the holes. And still we got to that. Double one there. So the other day, the light can stay down there. The other day I cut out two more cheek bands. And what I'm going to do very, very shortly is go and drill them. That's for the Irish harp. And I'll, uh, I'll most likely stream again tomorrow, I think. Oh, I'll show you my, my setup. This is, oh, I'm doing a video on this. So you can see it. This is an old, really old glue pot. And what I've done, because I don't use this glue pot anymore, I use the smaller ones. Um, I've turned a, a top to fit it. Let's see if we can go over there. Wait a minute. There you go. So I turned the top to fit nicely into the top of the urn. And then I've got a, a, a joiner there that I've drilled the hole in and bashed the joiner in. Then I've got a length of oh, PVC pipe. This is, this is a electrical. I just went down the hardware store to buy this joiner. And I said, have you got any of those? And none of them fitted. And then I looked on the PVC and it actually says electrical PVC. So I went to the electrical department and got the right one. So then 
We'll go in there. I'll cut this to whatever length. And this is drying at the moment. It's a bit of PVC pipe. This is a bit of an overkill as I explain in the video. This was made for a, a pressure cylinder that I could pressurize um, stuff or impregnate timber with. But now I'm not doing it, I'm, I'm using something else. So I thought I might as well repurpose it. So this has just been set with PVC cement. So that's got to sit there for a while before it gets hard. And then I'll cut this to length and this will then fit into here. And we'll have a bit of a, a bit of a tilt on it like that. And I'll have a drain hole drilled down the bottom where the water and excess steam can escape. I've seen some made and they put the steam vent on top. Uh, that means natural steam comes out. By having the steam on the bottom, it has to be under pressure to leave, so I think it's going to keep it warmer. And what I might do is coat it with an insulation foil to keep the heat in, but then I've got to work out some racks on the inside and I'll get that later on. Um, so I can put the timber in there and screw an end on, fire it up, fills full of steam, water dribbles out there, leave it for an hour, pull it out. Hopefully, hopefully then I can bend, I can bend um, the timber I want to to go around the necks of the harp. So we'll see, we'll see. It's all experimentation at the moment, but this works and I'm, I'm umming and ahhing whether or not to put another hole here with a plug that then if the water starts to drain out, uh, losing it through steam, I can then fill it up. So don't know. And then, I had to go and buy the well, Trevor, you're still there. Mate, I had to go and buy an old jug cord. Hey, you remember these? Multi-purpose cords. Yeah, you could boil water with it and you could discipline your kids with it. How many people out there got the jug cord around the legs? Yeah, I have. Whoa, didn't affect me. <laughs> oh, dear. So that's another project I've got going at the moment. Um, what I did there, I'll do the other side, but I don't know if I'll stream that, but when I come back to do a final, I'll show you how it looks. But that's a great way laterally thinking and you don't have to have a fancy piece of veneer like that you could get an ordinary piece of veneer or a thin sheet of metal or um, a bit of timber contrasting timber to give it something uh, that covers up that horrible crack that I had between the the neck and the pillar so anyway that's it it's only a quick stream I thought I'd share that whilst I was doing it and what are we doing um, I'll catch you later. So, this is Steve pulling the shed door down saying, remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe. I'll check to see if we've got any more. Keep it safe. Look after yourself. Be kind to each other. And Dreadnought, no, you did nothing wrong. Everything's all good. And if you're new to the channel or you'd like to, please hit the subscribe button and the bell, and you'll know when I'm streaming next, because that could be any time soon. <laughs> all right, till then, look after yourself. Take care. Stay creative. God bless. Catch you later.